What's up everybody, Shane here from Fugadeg 3D Printing and today we're going to fix the FT5 with a little help from PCBWay. So welcome back everybody. So if you have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know in some live streams a few months ago, I was working on the FT5, which I now call Metroplex. It has clipper on it, uh, auto bed leveling, is re-enabled on it, had some before, but now I'm using an inductive probe on it. I redid the whole bed and everything on there. So it's printing much better now and it's a much better machine, but I was always having issues with the mount for the probe because this is a fully enclosed printer. You can see there's panels all the way around this thing. So the inside gets rather hot and it was deforming my ABL mount. Now I did have the mounts before actually printed in resin. Those worked out great until they ended up shattering. And I think they just had kind of clipped on something and they're not, resin is not really strong for this type of application. And they did deform a little bit. So there was those for that. And then I have some of these printed in PLA, which did last for a little while. It was a PLA plus. I did uh, PETG as well. This one right here is actually PETG. And you can see how it kind of deformed over a little bit of time from multiple <laughs> factors. So one, the pancake motor gets rather hot because it's a pancake motor working hard, and two, because it's enclosed, so all that heat from the bed is getting just right up into where the hot end is and just heating up this mount. So in order to kind of combat that, I got, it, got this printed and I was using a fan. This one actually has the ability to have a 5015 fan on it, but I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna put a fan on this printer because it's not really needed. Uh, I'm doing pretty much only ABS on this machine now for printing other 3D printers. So there's no reason to have a part cooling fan on it. And if I want one later, I'll figure something out, but I just don't want one. So because this kept deforming, I honestly couldn't even get really one print out of it because it was just deforming too fast from the heat of everything. So I ended up having to just throw a blanket basically over my Prusa Mark 3S under this table actually and print the part in ABS. And that has been working out for a little while now. Now that was never my long-term solution because it's like, well, it's going to deform. And guess what? It's now deforming. But now my problem is, is that the nuts for this keep coming off and I didn't make it big enough to be able to use the lock washers that come with these induction probes. So that was kind of a bummer. So the new version I have though, should have enough clearance to be able to do that. I'm very excited about it. The reason why I'm excited about it is because it is from PCBWay. So PCBWay reached out to me a long time ago actually about doing a project with kind of anything. I was like, well, hey, I'm looking at making some PCBs for the WeDo X40 I have up here just to kind of make it a little bit easier to connect and disconnect things. The project kind of ended up dying because it really wasn't a need. I thought it'd be kind of cool to do for a while, but then I decided against it. So I just ended up not doing it. So I reached back out to them and said, hey, how about doing something CNC for me? And they said, absolutely, what do you want to do? So I sent them the CAD file for the mount that I made and I sent them over some drawings as well. And they came back to me with this guy. And this is basically, it's a brushed aluminum CNC part. Um, it's an X, Y, and Z, so it's a multi-axis uh, cut. This would have been like $40 to like, if I wanted to buy it myself, and I was like, ooh, that's a lot of money. But they were able to do it for me at no cost. Uh, they're not paying me for any of this, but they did provide this part for free. So it's about 40 bucks worth of a sponsorship for this video. So it's very nice of them to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I'm installing this on my printer, get everything going on it, and then I can get back to printing with this. Now, the nice thing about having an aluminum part is that it's not gonna deform. There is no matter amount of heat that comes out of this thing, it's not gonna deform this part, which is great because I really need this to be working. I'm trying to print my V0 uh, parts and I'm having some issues because the probe is now slouching more. Even though it's ABS, it is starting to slouch more with continuous long hours of printing. So I really need to get that swapped out so I can get back to printing reliably with this machine. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get this down because I can't really reach uh, to do it up here. So I'm gonna get this down on the ground. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm installing this and kind of the, the interesting way that I'm having the electronics run to the hot end of this printer 
which might be something you want to do on your large format printer, or if you have an FT5, it's something you might want to look at. So let's go ahead and pull this down and take a look at it. Okay, so here is the back of the tool head on the FT5, and you see I'm using the Ethernet breakout board here, which has been great, so I can just easily replace the cable if I ever have a problem with it. But it gives me the eight pairs that I need to be able to run everything for this. Now, the ABL does use three, where everything else uses two, so I am running a common uh, hot to some of them because the fans switch on the neutral, not on the hot. So I do have that, but it's nice, easy to do that. As you can see, this is super loose because I don't have those locking nuts in there. And again, it completely just came off. And you can see there are my two bolts that hold this on. I'm actually using the motor as the mount point for this. There it is. Okay, so we'll take these out. Okay, so these are just some M3s. So now we have the old one out, we're gonna get the new one, but we're gonna go ahead and put on these lock washers on here to make sure that this does not happen again. And I'm gonna raise this up just a smidge. Put our other piece on, and then I drop that. And then we put this other one on, I want to make sure this is as tight as I can get it because uh, I really don't want this coming loose again. And then all we have to do is hook it back up to those two holes again. All right, and there we have a CNC aluminum part to hold this on, which is absolutely fantastic. You can't see that for Jack, can you? <laughs> there we go, clear sticker, hard to see. It goes so wide with the shock because printer so doggone big. Uh, well, that's really it, so it's just get that installed. Now all I have to do is redo my Z offset and clipper, which is very easy to do with the new probe calibrate that they have in there, the little pop-up comes up. But if you're curious on how to do it, let me know down below. You can always do a separate video on something like that. But again, big thank you out to PCBWay. They've kind of solved my reliability problems with this printer as there is a ton of CNC parts that I've put into this machine from like 713 Maker, who I don't think is making this stuff anymore, but over the years I've gotten them. Some people have sent me some of their old parts that they've had from FT5. So this thing is just an absolute Frankenstein of parts and just a lot of time and honest, a lot of love have gone into this printer to just make it what it is today. So I'm very happy to add them to the folks that have helped kind of make this machine what it is. So if you guys are curious about PCB, I'll put some links down below for where you can get uh, some parts. I'll also put any discount codes that I have down there as well for their 3D printing or any of their CNC or their multiple other different things that they do. They were very kind and friendly to me and they were very open to just, hey, what can we do to kind of help you do what you need to do for this project? So very thankful to them. Another thing they did do is on the CAD, they did have somebody actually verify what I sent them was actually able to be CNC'd. So that was really nice of them. I'm assuming they do that for kind of everybody and every project they get, but it was really nice to have another set of eyes come onto it and say, hey, this is a little bit wrong. I did uh, export my CAD file incorrectly the first time. And again, I found that out through them actually reviewing it and verifying that everything was possible. I believe they do the exact same thing when it comes to 3D printing as well. So you do pay a premium for that, but hey, it's really nice for them just not to just cut it and like, oh, it doesn't work. That sucks. You paid for it. So I thank you out to them for making this possible. And thank you to you for watching this video. Hopefully it wasn't too long. But if you guys want to support me, best thing you can do, hit the subscribe button. If you want to throw some money my way, there's different ways to do that. There's Patreon, buy me a coffee, or a bunch of affiliate leaks to include PCB way down below at no cost to you. A little piece of what you buy comes back to me to help me build the channel, buy things, build printers, do all kinds of fun stuff. So I thank you all for watching. Hope you have a good day. Happy printing. And I'll see y'all next time.